Discover Digest Asia is brought to you by China Airlines and 88Ts. All right, guys, everyone, uh, welcome to Discover Digest Asia. And I found some Hawaii friends here in Okinawa from Hilo, yeah. Samantha. Bye, Sato. Bye, Sato. Okay, and she is Ryukyu uh, University student. Yeah. Right, and you're sure. learning Japanese. So we're standing in front of you, this very busy, very hip looking street. Kokusai Dori. It means international street. Yeah. Kokusai Dori. And what's so fitting is that behind us, there's a signage that I see right there. It says Aloha Shop. And I'm glad Samantha's here. And we got a lot of things to cover for you. Here we go, guys. Right here in Okinawa. Let's go. All right, folks, we are just about to enter into a very unique bar. Right. And uh, it's called Dojo Bar. Dojo. All right, apparently, Dojo Bar is like for martial artists. Oh, uh, yeah, for karate. Karate. And, <laughs> and if I go in there and mess around, I'm not going to come back out in one piece. Kind of uh, thing. Oh, do you? No, no, no. They're, they're very friendly. They're friendly. You oh, really? Afraid. Until you kind of mess around and they're not friendly no more. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Like I, I don't know karate, but I've been there before, okay. and I came out alive. So. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, all right. So it's right around the corner. Okay, let's take you inside and show you this very unique bar, dojo bar here in Okinawa. Let's go check it out. All right, here we go. But do you know about karate? I mean, what's so what's so uh, unique about it here in Okinawa? Is karate it? is like the martial art of Okinawa. It was born in Okinawa. So it wasn't Japanese. No, it's not Japanese. It's the owner is very friendly. Um, I believe he's Canadian. He's <laughs> Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Canadian? Ah. Hey, how's it going? Master James by any chance? Or no, no? no, James is fine. James, last name? Uh, Pankovich. Pankovich. Yeah. James Pankovich. <laughs> okay, here we go. James, I'm sorry, I'll just go by Jake. Hey, how's it going everybody? I'm here at a very unique bar. It's one of a kind. It's, it's only found here in Okinawa. It's called Dojo Bar and we're here at the owner and founder, James. Decided to start a bar named, of course, with a theme dojo and all. What, well, what caused it? Uh, Okinawa is famous as the birthplace of karate. Mm -hmm. So every year, thousands of people make the pilgrimage here um, to discover kind of the origins of karate, to train here, to meet local Okinawan teachers. Mm -hmm. So the dojo bar is kind of a place for people to meet. Um, and we also help people get connected to local people, local places, particularly karate related things. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, you know, it's more than just a pub, um, but it is just a fun place to relax. I'm curious, what, what is your uh, signature drink here at Dojo Bar? Drink I really want to try it. Is the Ichigeki. What is so the Ichigeki is a habushu cocktail. Okay. So habushu is a snake venom sake. So first we add shikwasa. So the shikwasa is a local Okinawan citrus. Mm -hmm. We got a dash of that. Some uh, cane sugar syrup, again, grown in Okinawa. Mm -hmm. So just for a little sweetness. So this is habushu. Um, so Okinawan awamori which has been infused with snake venom wow. and kind of the essence of, this, of the habu snake. You need to like brew it in there for a few years to really get it to infuse through the sake. Kind of original concoction. Um, because everybody wants to try habushu, but they're all scared of it. Mm. Right? If you just drink it straight, right. it's kind of hard going. Yeah? I mean, people do. Uh -huh. It's not a bad shot, but you can drink a lot of it. It's not that much fun. Right? But if you put it in a cocktail, it's, it's a lot better. Yeah, 
No, I, I would have I would have just said no <laughs> after I saw this one. After, thank you. Thank You're you for the Oh, this is great. Way to say cheers. Kari. Huh? Kari. 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 You're not one shot of this, are you? No, no. Okay, alright. Right. This should be, this should be good. <laughs> okay. Sip the snake. It has a bite. It does have a bite. <laughs> you know what they say about habushu? Oh, it's right. a natural aphrodisiac. The reason yeah. that they make habushu and the reason that they, particularly the men in Okinawa, will keep some habushu is it's supposed to give them that, you know, energy, give you that, that vitality, mm -hmm. you know, that men need. Mm -hmm. um, so very often also in a, in a traditional karate dojo, they'll have one of these tucked away, oh. you know, up in the corner. So at the end of the year, <laughs> when people pass their black belt ratings, yeah. they get a little shot of habushu. This is a dojo bar, so you have a dojo in this bar, right? Am I correct? It just we don't really train in the bar. Okay. <laughs> no, but um, I, what I meant was, is it, is it like upstairs or nearby? Or um, there are lots of dojos nearby. Okay, all right. Here, this is the famous beer of Okinawa that's okay. brewed up in Nago. Uh, in fact, if you get a chance to go, you should go and do the factory tour, the tasting tour of the Orient Beer Factory, mm -hmm. where you can see the stuff brewed and get, get the taste. It's uh, the most popular beer on. The correct pronunciation is? Orient. 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 Orient beer. <laughs> While enjoying my Orion beer, I had a chance to talk to Sammy about the similarities between Hawaii and Okinawa. But before that, anyone you want to say hi to back in the uh, <laughs> um, I guess everyone in Hilo, my family <laughs> and friends. This is actually juice, it's not alcohol. <laughs> it's, uh, apple juice, apple, apple juice. juice. <laughs> uh, Definitely, like in Hawaii, we have the aloha spirit, of course, but in Hawaii, we have like chimugukuru. It's like the Okinawan spirit. Like, Say it again, Chim uh, chimugukuru. Chimagukuru. Chimugukuru. Chimugukuru. Yeah, <laughs> or like, um, mm. it's so different in Okinawa, like much more laid back and everyone's much more friendly and caring of other people. There's still a sense of community. Like, yeah. <laughs> Say that one aloha spirit in, in Okinawan is? <laughs> okay, so a uh, hundred yen uh, shot challenge. All you gotta do is drop a hundred yen coin into the water. If you get it into the shot glass, you get a free shot of on the house. So, uh, here we go. I believe it will go in. Oh! <laughs> it was close. <laughs> Great time. Thank All you. Right, James. Thank you so much. Very good time. Check out Dojo Bar. It's original. It's only in Okinawa. From Dojo Bar, we're here now at a real dojo, meeting with Sensei Seizan Breyet at Nagahama Karate Dojo, and learning about more about karate here in Okinawa. All right, how's it going, everybody? We're here at a karate dojo, and next to me, Sensei, thank you so much to welcome us into your dojo. But karate is originated from Okinawa. That's true. Um, there have been some indigenous fighting forms on Okinawa before, but uh, most of karate originated from Okinawa. Most of the karate we know today came from Okinawa, but they also shared an awful lot with China. So this style actually came from China in 1910, and then it, uh, it, it ended up in, uh, in Japan and on Okinawa, so now it's considered an Okinawan martial arts. One of the three big Okinawan styles being Weichiru, Shoryu, and Gojiru. So we're very happy to be working on this one. Which style is this? That this is Weichiru. 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 It's a very beautiful uh, environment. you got various ages, from kids all the way to like teenagers. What is the uh, youngest to the oldest here? Uh, the youngest isn't here tonight, but he's two years old. <laughs> and, and the oldest, I think, is uh, 37 or 38 years old for tonight. Different age groups are able to train together. Everybody here learns the same thing. It doesn't matter. You learn the and same thing. Even if you're experienced for years, you still do the same thing. That's right. You learn all the same stuff because tomorrow you may need to use a technique. And if you're 10 years old or you're, you're 40 years old, you may use the same technique. And if I don't teach it to my students and they don't know it, then I failed as a teacher. The gentleman on the second row with the beard, yes, that's Toyama Seiko Sensei. He uh -huh. was my teacher for uh -huh. 11 years mm -hmm. and then he passed away in 2009. Mm -hmm. So he left this dojo to be run to continue preserving the old original style that he learned from the founder of this system. He was the last active student of the founder of which he wrote. It's me right here. This is Toyama Sensei his personal family gomon, his family crest. And uh, he designed it in such a way that it has his own family, his own philosophy. So uh, we know the philosophy and it helps us to learn the system of, um, of giving and taking, hard and soft, uh, flexing, yielding, and, and so on. 
And then this one is, uh, the symbol here is uh, Zan, mm -hmm. or Yama. And, mountain, uh, right? Mountain, mm -hmm. yes. And uh, together, this is To for Toyama, so mm -hmm. together they spell Toyama. The purpose for karate training is to develop a lifestyle of, of peace and then to also develop the means to protect that lifestyle if necessary. So their purpose, the original purpose for karate was not for tournaments or competition fighting or for big public displays, but to uh, to internalize a, a peaceful lifestyle, a peaceful attitude, and then to develop the means to protect that if it's been threatened. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of students on Hawaii. I don't know if they're active right now. Okay. One is a seventh degree black belt, and he's waiting to open his dojo, I think back in the States somewhere. You mentioned seventh degree. How, how high does it go up to in terms of degree? Karate, karate ranks go up to 10th degree black belt. Wow. Toyama Sensei was our 10th degree black belt. We won't have another 10th degree black belt. Wow. We decided to stop it at my time. Anything that you can show the viewers in terms of a little bit of self-defense lesson or is that too much? Or uh, no, it's not too much. Let me see. Um, uh, <laughs> so, Sven is the bad guy. Okay. So you're a bad guy. Right, okay. You're a bad guy. Okay. So he's going to punch and I'm going to break his arm. Okay. So he do this in arm pounding, right? Yeah. So all I did was deflect the punch away from my face. I'm going to do this, grab it, and smash. Oh my god. That would hurt. So I popped the elbow joint. And it's just one, two, bang, like that. Wow. And this is a sweet spot for my arm, and that's a sweet spot for his. Uh -huh. Just with the elbow joint. So that's one. Woo! Certainly, is you're doing this for what purpose? So what is what is your purpose of learning karate? I mean, other than training with sensei here. So basically, I've always been inspired by the idea of becoming the strongest version of yourself, and I grew up in a very physical lifestyle with judo, also, and uh, karate in some way was for me the way to become the strongest version of yourself, physically as mentally, spiritually, yeah, just in, as a whole. So you gave up judo to, to learn karate, is that what it is? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Oh, that's very interesting. Becoming that strongest self right now, are you doing that way? Uh, not yeah. the strongest version, yeah, that's, that's the goal for, you know, it's, that's it's a lifetime a never goal. Yeah, it's, it's a, a never-ending never goal. goal. Uh, helpful for that also is in greatest that his wife, Sumako Senpai, she is a yoga sensei. So actually I got the chance to train and start yoga here as well. Oh, that's cool. And yoga also is, is of course yeah. a good tool mm. or a good lifestyle and way oh. to become strong. Well. Yo, this is your oh hello, Art. nice to meet you. Hello, very thank you. I'm from Hawaii. Yes, I have uh, my relatives, but... Oh, please, say hi to your relatives. <laughs> yes, ahead, yeah. uh, but it's been a long time, so I forgot their names. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I love it. <laughs> right, you can say hello. More than 40 years. So. Oh, 40, oh, that, that is when too long. Well. It's been too yeah. long. Okay. Too bad. Maybe maybe Colin could help in reconnecting because Colin's good at that. Colin is good at connecting um, lost family members. So, Very true. Yeah. yeah. I will ask my mother. Yes. Because my mother's cousin actually. So, oh, that's cool. Her yeah. family, her cousin lives there. Well, you know what? I, I just say, just in case, if you do recognize who she is, and you can call us and uh, we'll connect you guys. How is that, right? And again, your name is? Sumako. Sumako, last name? Uh, Brie. Okay, yeah. Brie, yes, okay. But of course, your family name, your maiden name was? King. 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 Okay. King. I see. K-I-N. K-I-N. You were, um, I guess, in terms of like, it's either... Uh, you were kind of like jabbing at one of the students and it's like they it's like they were breathing heavy uh -huh. as they were getting hit but it's like are they building up yeah uh, so what they're doing is they're slowly building up muscle tissue in a way that it's uh, tough and flexible resilient mm -hmm. in china they had a term called pan gai nun mm -hmm. which means uh, tough and flexible and uh, that's a good description of the system so you don't get injured you just you kind of bounce back sensei was willing to give another lesson the secret death touch Obviously, no one volunteered, and I surely couldn't participate. So I got my stunt double, Evan Takayama, to volunteer. This is okay. Oh, this, no. is, this, is, this is the, this uh, is oh, no. the secret death touch. Wait, I think watch, I watch. One day you will die.
From Okinawa's own martial arts, we're switching now to performing arts. We begin with San Shin, the most recognizable instrument you'll find in Okinawa. It's a cultural identity with its very own musical genre. And up next, we will be joined by a San Shin performer. So stick around right here on Discover Digest Asia. All right, folks, we're here now at Aka Inkogu. It's a shrine, and it's right behind us here. And we are here with Daichi-san, who is a yes. Sanshin performer. Hi. <laughs> it's a traditional um, instrument here in Okinawa, mm -hmm. right? And also... Aka Inko, the meaning is Sanshin no Kamisama. So it's the Sanshin God. It's believed to be the Sanshin God, the God of oh. the Sanshin instrument. So that's what Aka this shrine Inko is Gu for. Aka Inko Gu is the Sanshin God. Aka Inko. Mm -hmm. Aka Inko, yeah. actually. It's okay. the shrine honoring this. Oh, the Gu is the shrine. Aka yes, Inko. Yes, okay. yes, yes. Ah, I understand. We're going to notice a lot of this. And this is a Shisai right here uh, next to us. Yes. These two. Would you be able to explain to us what I mean, what the Shisai okay. is? Yeah. Oh, Shisai is the shrine of the Shisai and the shrine of the Shisai. So you have two Shisas, right? Mm -hmm. One with the mouth open, one mm -hmm. with the mouth closed. Right. Yes. Right. Open. Mm-hmm. Oh, no shisa. The male Shisa. Oh, yeah. okay. Of the pair. Okay. But the no Shisa. So the one with the closed mouth is the female pair. I see. Okay. For the, the male, the mouth open, it's receiving the good luck. Oh. Okay. The good luck that's received by the female. Mm -hmm. Doesn't let it go. It oh, keeps it. It holds yeah. it in. Aun, aun, this is aun to it. Aun. Yes, it's yes, a closer, yes, right? Yes, so yes, the aun. Yes, yes. All right. What? What? I mean, to me, it looks like a lion. Am I correct? Is this a lion? Lion, this guy. Yes. Ano, moto moto a lion no nagare des. Shishi is the lion. Oh. Yes. There's a lion. Here. Now I know. Because <laughs> everywhere you <laughs> go in Okinawa, wherever it is, whether it's a home, business, I mean, the front. It's always in the entrance, if I notice. Am I correct? It's in the entrance okay, of, a, of, of, of a... Of a of a yes, yes. This is a shrine. 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 So it's to protect that, that house or the building from the mm -hmm. entrance from any bad spirits or any kind of bad things to come in. Interesting. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's go up yeah. here and in good spirit and good luck. Let's go up let's the stairs. Check same. it out. Alright, here we go. Okay. Oh. How old is the shrine? How, how long has it been around? The actual story itself is yeah. about 500 years old. Uh -huh. So 1996. Uh, 1996. 1996. Yes. 1996. Oh, it's fairly new. So, so anybody who plays the, the Sanshin mm -hmm. in Okinawa, um, mm -hmm. this, this is a very uh, sacred place, a very important place for those performers because this is the, the origin, the, the story, and the legend of Akuinko. Mm -hmm. The Sanshin starts mm -hmm. here. And uh, you've been a Hi. Sanshin yeah. performer for how long? Whoa. 30 years. Oh, 30 years you're a rock star. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Born to Sanshin, man. Born to Sanshin. Yeah, yeah. 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 You, oh, wow, that's great. I yeah. can't wait to see you play. I can't, yeah. All right. And, uh, oh, yes. Korega uh, Kuruchi. Kuruchi? Sanshin no. Mm. The, the, yes, neck. Yeah. the neck. I got you. Okay. Sanshin the Sao. The neck. Korega Kuruchi. Kuruchi. So oh, I see. That's a bigger chi. Oh, right. okay, okay. So okay. he's a bigger Kuruchi. Uh -huh. So it takes at least a hundred years to make one neck, or to grow the, yes. the tree for the neck. So his Sanshin, about 300 years ago. Wow. Or 300 years old to make the neck. Oh, wow. That's, that's cool. cool. Hello. Next generation, next generation, oh. generation to generation. So this, okay. um, this shrine here, Tell us more about this. Uh, what is the setting for here? What is that? Do? And, and it's part of the story where Akenko is said to be born. So, so this is the roots of the Sanshin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's related to this. So, so we are standing on the ground of where Sanshin yes, was yes. born. So it's it's the the, the Sanshin is a very important instrument to the Okinawan people. Kind of mm -hmm. like the, the ukulele is to the Hawaii people, right? right? It's the heart of the people. Mm. So the Sanshin is a very important uh, instrument in the Okinawan ah. culture. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So does all performers like you know how to make Sanshin, or are you just a rare person that knows how to play and make it at this? You have. It, there's a lot of professionals. You have to be like a professional level. Mm -hmm. So so maker usually, versus yeah. a player. I see. Yeah. So, so mo are. most likely you don't have that combination of maker and player. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So even just just making the Sanshin, very few. Uh, the instrument was it influenced from another culture that was brought in, or was it all uh, that Sanshin just originated from Okinawa? So it's said to have come from China. Oh, I see. Yeah. So yeah. the roots are from China. Mm -hmm. gotcha. So the the person Akainko went to China. 
came back with the instrument to Okinawa. Um, we are going to be moving on to a next stop where we're going to see Daichi san perform, right? No, no, no. No, no. First okay. time, first time. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Catch this episode and more of our previous episodes at discoverdigest.com. Thank you for watching and join us next time for more Discover Digest Asia. See ya!